first of all, um, I was really shocked when I got so many views on this stuff about spraying without any orange peel. So, uh, I realize it's a really hot subject. A lot of you guys are struggling with this stuff. So, you know, I, I had to think back, you know, back many years ago when I was trying to spray without getting any orange peel. And, you know, it took a lot of practice, a lot of trial and error. And then you start to figure out the stuff that works. And then... Uh, you know, it, it, so a lot of guys are like, well, it's just, you know, it's all about you and the gun. And it's like, well, a little bit that way, but it's really, it's about, it's about a lot. It's technique more than anything. And if you, you know, to do it over and over and over and over. Yeah. If you just about you and the gun, it's not because it, it's it, it to do it. Like every time when you when I was working in the spray you know booth and all that stuff and I'm still spraying all the time but I don't spray cars you know it's it's different signs are basically the same thing you know it's the same kind of paint everything's the same but it's uh, so um, but the thing is is it, it it when you're doing it you don't really think about it because you've done it so many times but then I started thinking well you know I said what it was like for me. I first started spraying and then there was nobody there to show you anything they didn't have YouTube so um, there was no way to show somebody how to spray without getting orange peel so what this video is about real quick and this is I'm gonna summarize everything that I showed you guys in all the other videos but be sure to watch the other videos if you're really trying to learn this stuff uh, because there's a lot more depth in the stuff I'm gonna go over on those videos because I'm gonna try and keep this one uh, fairly short. I mean, it's going to be long because it's a lot of stuff, but it's not nearly as long as listening you know, to all those videos. So what this is for is so that let's say, you know, after this little introduction thing, you can just fast forward to that point and then you could just watch this right before you're going to do it. Because if you don't do it very often, then it's, that happens you forget. So some guy goes, well, hey, you know, I get, you know, one time I do really good, the next time I don't do really good, well, it's because you missed one of the steps you didn't catch, you know, you, you, you recoded too soon, or you recoded too late, or, you know, all those little things that you forget about because you don't do it all the time. So, um, you know, I'm not always spraying clear, but I always, I spray a lot of different types of paint, and I use all different types of, everything from airless to air fed, you know, Air, air and air and uh, airless and you know to like using turbine sprayers using car spraying spray guns HVLP LVLP you know I don't do all the same thing every time everything's different because I do a lot of field work and uh, a lot of field work is not like painting in a garage it's not like painting in a booth you know I, I have to worry about where my paint's going that's not going on the panel. Um, so I do a lot of things way different with what the stuff I'm doing now than when I did automotive. It's 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 not just trying to make the finish look really good. So anyway, enough of the introduction about this stuff. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to summarize all the stuff you need to go over. Number one is you need a really good brand to clear. If you have a garbage brand to clear, it will, if you have a cheap brand of clear, even if you buy some clear and try it, if you get a big fat run in it and it makes white edges, um, probably not a good one to use because uh, you're going to be right on the edge of running. You're probably going to have a couple spots that you're going to get some runs. And it's better, much easier to sand out a couple runs than a whole bunch of orange peel, believe me. Okay, so the ones that I use are, I like, are matrix clear you can use the two to one matrix you can use the four to one matrix both those clears are really good for spraying it's really smooth um, and they also also last pretty well um, the my favorite brand of clear is uh, drew carriage is a paint supply in montclair and they have their own house brand so and that stuff is sick i mean it will it will go on so smooth i mean this is their house brand clear. There is no sanding, no buffing, nothing. That is just straight spray right there. So, you know, if you like that, if 
you think that that, I mean, I don't know how much smoother anybody could get something than that. I don't think it's possible. That is so smooth that there's no orange peel at all. So, um, you know, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys is how to do that when you're done. Have a nice, smooth, perfectly smooth finish. The Drew Carriage, um, their house brand clear, it's called Multi Clear 4 to 1. Okay. This also technique will also work with a lot of the other 4 to 1 clears, some of the 2 to 1s. HS Clear, totally recommend a spray booth because uh, you're going to need your pressure up pretty high, high solids. Okay. Temperature and hardener for your clear. Now, you need to, if you have a, if you're, okay. So let's say you get too slow of a hardener. Um, you know, you can wait a little longer. It's not going to kill you to do. If it's too fast of a hardener and it's a hot day, that might be a problem because if it starts to fingerprint before you get that second coat on, you're probably going to have some orange peel issues. Um, so having a decent, having the right hardener um, for the temperature is, is important. I'm trying to get that one that works for you your speed because if you're if you haul ass you might be way ahead of the you mean me you or you're going too slow then you need you need to have a clear the one that's a little slower for you it depends on how you spray okay Re reduce your clear to the maximum amount allowable now okay some clears most four to one clears most the ones i'm talking about you do not reduce them if you reduce them you will compromise the clear and make it not last as long so, um, so for instance, if you have a four to one medium solids clear, you should not be reducing that clear with anything. If you have a HS clear, you need to make sure that it's to the maximum amount allowable so that you can have it as thin as possible for atomization. Because the key to doing this again is atomization, getting the clear to break up finer, gives you a smoother finish. It's not about how heavy it's put on. If it was about how heavy it's put on, it would be easy. Just bury it, you know. No, it's not like that. But uh, go ahead and uh, get the uh, maximum amount allowable and then spray those coats nice and light and even, just right. Okay. Remember, the principle of what you're doing is you're putting on the clear. You're trying to get as many dots per square inch as possible. So... When you spray it out of the gun, it's dots, little tiny dots all over. You want to get as many of those to come out as, and so that it comes out uh, a nice, even, light to medium coat. If you put it on too heavy, then you end up with the orange peel. Okay. So, it kind of wraps up the next one. Hang on a second. So the next thing you want to do is go over the types of coats you're going to do. The first coat is going to be a medium wet coat. What's a medium wet coat? A medium wet coat is when the dots just connect together, okay? That's a medium wet coat. When it's a full wet coat is when the dots connect together and you smash them just a little bit. So that's when those guys, European guys say, smash on the clear. That's kind of, kind of a little bit what it's going, but it, you're, I'm, some people think smash it on is like puddling it you know no <laughs> it's not puddling it's just getting those the smash just a little bit together so that it flows out you know and then that the clear has to do its job so the the product you gotta have has to be good to be able to make it work out air pressure if you're in a spray booth the more air the better the more air you put into it obviously it will atomize the material more so if you're in a spray booth you know run it at the full amount hvlp will let you use if you're in a hvlp area if you're just in a whatever that other kind of gun is called i don't know anything about them but they're like hvlp but it's i guess uh it's but it's not hvlp um use the 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 maximum amount you can to stay in regulation so more air the better if you're not in the spray booth um you want to use as much as you can tolerate, but usually for me, with the Techno Pro Light, if I wasn't in a spray booth, hypothetically, um, I would be at like 14 to 16 pounds, and my material would be turned down to make up to 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 be able to keep it still having a fine spray. So if you keep the material, remember, it's not about how much you put on; it's about how it's misted on 
and miss it on evenly. So um, that's the that's the key thing there is so I'm you know I get two and a half turns out on a Practitechna Pro Light three to three turns. Usually second coat, third coat, I'm up at three, three and a quarter turns. Um, so just depends on the weather, stuff like that. It, it can change that a little bit. If it's a little too hot, you might want to have it a little more open. You know, it's those things, you know, those aren't like written in stone. So uh, your gun settings that goes over that. So the spray gun you use. Now, if you're using a Harbor Freight Tools gun and you're expecting everything to look like this, it's kind of probably not going to happen. I mean, you can. I mean, yeah, it can be pretty good. But um, if you're using a spray at H LVLP, maybe um, it's still doesn't put out quite enough volume to keep up with the, something this large to spray that smooth. Um, but yeah, I, you can get it pretty close. I'm not going to say it's not, not doable. It's, you can get it pretty decent. But you're spraying this right here, this flat panel, hell no. It's not going to come out that smooth. Sorry. Now with an HF tool gun, it, 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 you just can't do it. It'll get runs in it or you'll have orange peel, one of the two. And you can see anything that's in this flat panel. This flat panel, it doesn't matter. If there's just a hair of orange peel in it, it looks like crap. And then you won't even be able to sand and buff it out because it's it's so flat that you know it's just too hard to do. I've tried it. I've had orange peel in something like this. I used a cheap gun, got a little tiny bit of orange peel in it, had to try and sand it out, and it you know it used 600 grit and start with that and try and cut it down and cut it down and cut it down. And still, no matter what, it still barely has a little orange peel in it when you're done. Where this pretty much that's been sanded and buffed, so. Huh. You know, there's a little bit, but not much. I mean, it's really flat. It's really smooth. Not bad. It could be better. If I did it in a booth, it would be better. But maybe I did, maybe I didn't. <laughs> um, so anyway, but the distance from your work, the other thing everybody makes a mistake on, let's get the spray gun. So those of you guys who don't think I use an HF tool gun, I have one of these pieces of garbage. You know, they're not bad, you know, for 10 bucks, how can you go wrong? But they don't last very long. This one here's a shot already. I'm pretty ready to toss it. Um, the uh, thing inside here, I'll show you real quick in the middle of this video. Oh, I dropped it. I don't care. It's already toast. That tapered fit fits in another tapered fit, and it gets a little tiny bit of booger on it. And guess what? It doesn't seal anymore. So your fan gets wonky, gets ugly, doesn't work very good. They just, they're, and the threads are too fine to keep clean. Um, this thing here gets filthy after no time at all. You know, hey, for 10 bucks, 15 bucks, you just toss it in the trash, go get another one. But if you're really interested in doing it right, you get a nice gun. One of these, Iwata uh, Supernova LS400, or a Techno Pro Light, which is this right here. This is a great gun, it's real lightweight. It's inexpensive. It's probably the least expensive of the good guns. So that's why I went with this, you know, a few years back because I just got tired of, you know, having to deal with guns that don't last and they don't break. And, they, they you know, just farting around with my stuff here, I just decided to get one. Um, doing the stuff I do in the field, LVLP is better. And I use uh, a lot of uh, turbine spray So because you don't have to lug around a heavy compressor. So if you're using a good gun, you're going to be very close to the surface. You're going to be about a fist away is what some of the guys say, maybe an inch further than that. Um, but if you're way out 12 inches back and you're trying to get an orange peel, um, you're probably going to have a problem with um, the paint drying a little bit before it hits the surface and then it'll leave some orange peel in there pretty heavy or dry spots is what they call that really. It'll be kind of going on too dry, and that makes orange peel. So um, the Techno Pro Light, remember, is a really good gun. It's inexpensive. I think it's about 400 bucks for a whole bunch of air caps and everything. I don't think it comes with the HVLP air cap for that. You have to pay a little more money for that. If you're in an HVLP area, you have to have HVLP. If you get busted without it, it's going to be a problem. TE20 is only, avail is only legal, from what I understand in certain AQMD areas and uh, if you live in the wrong area and you're using that one you could get in trouble probably not gonna because it is 
it, it, under some regulations, they allow it to be HVLP. So it's weird, you know, I don't know. Um, so the other thing is, when you're spraying your material, um, spray straight at, see how my hand is moving, my wrist is, and my gun is always spraying straight at the wall. Don't do this. None of this, because then you're leaving a lot of extra overspray over there, and that's all going to be orange peel. So a lot of us like to trigger right at the body lines, because if you get a run, it's going to be a little tiny one right here at a, at a body line that's not easy to, not hard to fix. And you, you can, you know, look for them. Don't, you're not, if you guys are customers, you're not supposed to be listening to that part. So the other key thing is the most important, one of the most important, biggest mistakes people make. The biggest mistake people make to get orange peel is either recoating too late or recoating too soon. So when you test between coats, if this window was papered and you sprayed this area right here, um, you're going to test on the paper. You're going to put your finger on there. If it strings up just a little bit, good to go. If it smears, when you put your finger on there, if it's smeary, no good. You need to wait a little longer. If you put your fingerprint on and it doesn't make a little string or anything in it, and it, your fingerprint just makes a fingerprint, you waited too long. So that's the biggest mistake people make is that third thing or the last thing there because you want your next coat to melt into the one before it. If it's already starting to catalyze and your fingerprints, it's you're going back over it. I'm not gonna say you can't get in it. Won't you know that you can make it come out really good with that? But you're probably gonna have uh, issue trying to get it. You're probably gonna get runs trying to you know bring it back, or you'll probably get some orange peel because you won't be putting it on heavy enough. You put it on too dry, and it'll want it to dry into that coat versus melt into it. Okay, follow me. Dry onto the coat. If it's already dry underneath, it'll kind of dry onto the coat. It won't melt into it. If it's if, if it's the, just the right time when you spray that next coat, it'll barely just it'll it'll go on like it's going to dry on it, and it'll just start melting in. So that's about the right time to recoat. So that's where the hardener makes the difference. So if you have a hardener that's too fast, that might be a problem for you. So having one that's too fast is almost worse than having ones too slow. Um, but I like cat fast hardeners because I, myself, I'll be onto that next coat. I don't want to have to wait. I get impatient. So it's just, a, that's that's all you right there. You figure out what works best for you. Um, and if you're, but if you're using a, a cheaper gun, then you might want that really slow hardener. Um, where if you're using a, a good gun like this, this thing puts out a lot more material than the than the HF gun or something like that. So you're gonna want you're gonna want something that dries a little bit faster, possibly for that. So those are all things to think about, and it's kind of like engineering your spray. You're trying to figure out what your ability is and how to make that work in with the other stuff. So with the summarization of that, um, when you guys if you guys want to learn this stuff and and you're you're you know it's Sometimes it's good to practice. Guys watch practice and everything, and that's good. But sometimes, like guys like me, I like to watch somebody else too. Because when I watch somebody else and I can see what they're doing. So with all that I've said to you, everything that I've showed you guys in everything in this whole video, after watching this, go watch the Gunman channel. The guy, he's an Australian guy. He does, uh, he calls it smash repair. I watch him sometimes because it's kind of fun. You know, it's just, he's a, he's just a smash guy and he just fixes wrecks and stuff. Does color matching. He's really good at color matching too. So, um, but he does, uh, the thing that's really cool is when you watch him spray, he's a perfect example of, uh, he never sprays like this. He's always spraying straight at it. His overlap is 75%, which I, one thing I forgot to cover. His overlap is exactly 75%, 75%. You can even go to 80 and go faster, okay? So you can have more overlap, you know, instead of 25, you know, instead of the, you're going over 50% of what you do, you're going over 70, you know, 75%. So, so it's, so instead of going, let's say you're fans this wide, you go halfway over that, 
normally with a clear you're going to go quarter that way so um so you watch him and he does it exactly the way that i'm telling you but i'm telling you this that like the technical way you know by telling you then you look at him you see what i'm telling you and then you can see exactly what i'm talking about so that when you're doing it you can sit there and watch now when you're doing it at home you're going to be standing at this angle right here and watching you're going to be watching that's why you need that lower pressure you can't have your pressure up that high and be able to see at home if you're in a booth that that dust will just go right over into the into this into the uh, fan into your batting filters and um it it'll be gone before you, you so you can stand right here at an angle and look at what you're doing just stay right on that but you know when you get really good at it you know when you've been doing it a long time you almost don't even need to look at it you're you're all about the speed the time unless you're using something different you're it's all about the distance speed and time and doing it exactly over and over and over like a machine so that's why they have machines that do this stuff you know that's why the the companies have figured out exactly how to make a machine that does exactly what the people do in in the factories so anyway um that's how you do it all right uh all in one video there and uh hope it works out for you on your next project all right but be sure to watch those other videos if you like this video give it a like um share it with somebody um subscribe to the channel there's all kinds of new stuff coming um i'm really busy with a lot of stuff right now so it might be a while before i get on a restoration but keep stay tuned and subscribe and keep looking out because uh, in a few months i'll be doing something else I'll be doing another project i'll be finishing up that little bug probably all right talk to the next video